Hello, everybody. Welcome to Series 4, Episode 4 of the Property Empress podcast. I'm Drew, and I'm with uh, the Property Empress herself. This is Anna. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? It's so, so good to be back. And it's nice to have you back. Yeah, I'm still going. It's been four now, I guess. It's been four, including intro one. So, yeah, still enjoying it. That's good. Oh, it's Um, so nice to have you back. Thank you. This week, we discussed it last week. Um, It's an important subject for us to cover because it's quite relevant at the moment. It's just been passed in the last week, about a week and a half. The renters reform. Very interesting stuff. (laughs) Yeah. it's definitely interesting stuff but this is this well, yeah whether it's interesting or not it's very important for landlords to know this it's going to be big changes probably the biggest changes i've known for the last few years in the landlord and renters market for private landlords the measures they're putting in place which we will go through in a minute there's a few key steps there's a lot that the, i think the reform was about 90 pages long but we've condensed that to six key points and by when i say we've condensed that we found somewhere that's condensed it for us so we can talk about it in summary detail and give you the, the most important parts of it that need to be looked at. When the reform's coming to play, should we start with the first one? There's something that I think is so important for our beautiful listeners to hear because I went on the government's website when I was doing my research. By the way, I'm already very impressed with your research because I didn't know it was 90 pages. <laughs> but no, there's a, there's a paragraph when I was looking at the government website and it in all honesty, it annoyed me and it angered me. And I thought I might as well, I might as well share the love and share, share it with everyone who's watching and listening. So on the government's website, it says the rent is reform bill. Oh, I'll give you the background first, actually, because we've been, it's been talked about for years. And it was the white paper, I think it was called, was first published in June 2022, the fairer private rented sector. So they kind of set the intention fairly early on that it was like fairer, private rented sector but yes you're absolutely right the bill was put into the house of commons in may so yeah i think you're right a couple of weeks ago wasn't yeah, it i think it was from the time of recording it was two weeks previous so it's it's been really recent but it's been put forward to be debated and voted on so it isn't final yet they're still kind of thrashing out the the details i know the nrla the national residential landlord association they're really good by the way if you're not a member it's like 85 pounds it's so cheap and they're so good and you get so much information and all the resources you need as a landlord anything from your prescribed information documents your contracts inventory listings it's just it, it gives you a pack of stuff to go apart from the fact that you get all of the, the support of the the association as well you you get all the literature you need to give you a kickstart to and we we use a lot of their stuff don't we yeah we do and they send they actually when the bill was passed i got an email i think that evening and it just summarized all the changes so but they're doing quite a lot i think to try and fight on behalf of landlords to make sure that it's kind of maybe a little bit fairer but it's not expected to come into force until the first of october next year so it still has a way to go but it is definitely worth knowing about i think more than anything because there's a lot of fear mongering online so that we know what's going on but i did want to uh, read this paragraph have i read it to you i can't remember no no surprise me it's okay <laughs> the renters reform bill will deliver on the government's commitment to bring in a better deal for renters including abolishing no-fault evictions and reforming landlord possession grounds. So they're very clear. And I, I get where they're coming from, that, you know, it, the idea that you have these landlords and then the renters, the renters, the idea is that they're, they're kind of more vulnerable, they're in a, a more difficult situation, they're not expected to understand all the regulation like landlords are. So it makes sense that we are looking after the renters, making sure that they're not being taken advantage of. However, I would have really liked for this to have been helping both sides to be empowered. I think it's, you see a lot where it's like, you know, you lift one side up and for some people think you've got to push the other side down. But actually, it's, I think it should be about lifting everyone. Causing a division between a landlord and tenant right at the start of passing a bill or, or reform like this. It, it's just not getting things off onto the right foot. The way it's worded just looks like it's playing into tenants' favour and not landlords. So any landlords who are then having to meet these reforms are just putting their backs up straight away, I think. A professional landlord shouldn't worry about what's going on, really, but it would kind of be nice that the government would just reiterate that they're protecting the landlord as well. Should we dive in? <laughs> We're very excited about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do the first one. The first one's 
the biggest one. Sure, anyone who's read anything about the reforms will know this. It's the one that's leapt out. It's the abolishment of Section 21s, aka no fault eviction. It used to be that you could have a Section 21, so a landlord could just say, the tenant's not done anything wrong, but I just need the house back for some, or the property back for some reason. Or it would be fault-based, which is Section 8, which was the tenant hasn't paid, I need the property back, usually was the reason that you'd get a Section 8 notice, or, you'd, or the tenant had broken some term of the contract but it was basically fault based or non no fault based what unfortunately tended to happen was that tenants would find that they would be reluctant to for example if there was something broken in a property or something they needed fixing and the landlord wasn't fixing it wasn't fixing as quickly as they felt or wasn't fixing it properly uh, the tenant would have to really push to get it fixed and then the landlord could to, could serve notice as this no fault based eviction so really what they're trying to do is they're scrapping that to try and help protect the, the tenants. So that's the intention behind it. For us, we have no reason to ask our tenants to leave unless they don't pay their rent, which has never happened. You know, we, we've never had to evict a tenant. But like you said, the Section 21 isn't for tenants who don't pay their rent. It's That's Section 8 anyway, which is remains. If a tenant's not paying their rent, then they there are steps to evict them on a completely different grounds so you don't need section 21 i don't think that section 21 is necessarily needed anyway why are you evicting a tenant with no fault if you're a professional landlord the only things i can think of you uh, evicting a tenant is by needing the house back and that's either to sell it or to move into it or you are not getting rent from them they're not paying a rent in which case there's already a purpose for that so it's almost like section 21 is not really needed now anyway I absolutely agree. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to know what, if anyone has has listened to this, but you can put in the comments any reasons you can think of that might be you have to evict the tenant, but it's not through needing the property back for any reason. Why else would you do it? The only thing I can think of is if, particularly with us, because we have tenants that stay for a long, long, long time, if the house is getting a little bit run down and we just think actually we would need to rent it, that's the only thing I can think is if potentially we'd maybe need to renovate the property. But again, I think in in all honesty, what we would probably do is just say to the tenant, I mean, I don't think we would ask them to leave to renovate the property, but if that was that important to us or something, we'd probably just say, can we stick you in a hotel and pay for your hotel yeah. for two weeks yeah. while we renovate the property? Yeah. And then they'll probably move back in. Well, exactly. It's a big change and I think maybe that's what people don't like because it's it's been there and then it's being removed and there's the fear of it not being accessible anymore but it, it, if you look dig a bit deeper and look at why you'd really need it in the first place then you probably realize that you don't i think you've hit the nail on the head to yeah. be honest i suspect what's happened because what i'm hearing through social media is people like you can't you can't get tenants out anymore it's such a pain to get them out and i think people have misunderstood or the community or the I don't know, mainstream media have been fear-mongering saying now you can't get tenants out. And it's just not the case. They're just, they're getting rid of one particular not really needed way of getting rid of tenants. But ultimately you can still serve a section eight if your tenant doesn't pay off, they breach the contract. If you need to move. So the other thing is, yeah, if you want to sell the property, if you want to move back in or if a family member, you want to move family member in, you can then serve a section eight, you can ask them to leave. So, and I, again, and I hate to say it, but if you are that kind of landlord that you don't like the fact that tenants, you know, demanding that they have hot water or something, I don't know. If you, if you are that kind of landlord, you're going to get around it. And this is the thing. You're just going to say, well, actually, I'm going to sell the property. Then when it comes to, I think you said it, didn't you, the other day about that they'd stick on right move for a week and then go, oh, it didn't sell and then stick a new yeah. tenant in bit of a dark art and i wouldn't recommend that no no no. yeah we're not we're absolutely uh, not just, giving we tools were just, we were talking about ways that landlords may get around this but this is the thing a lot of the regulation that comes in we saw it when they got rid of the tenant fees yeah. and then what the landlords did was just whack the rents up so they still charge the tenants just in a different way so sometimes the regulation has good intentions but it really doesn't get the desired desired effects exactly and if you are worried check out we have done previous episodes on how to find long-term dream tenants so once you've got an amazing tenant in that looks after the property pays their rent on time you don't you're not going to need them to leave anyway exactly part two is the oh rolling tenancy isn't it so this is an interesting one because most tenancies tend to have a fixed term so it tends to be six months or a year you can do three or five years we have done that with certain um, tenants lenders actually don't really like that because they want to be up but then again without with the no, no fault eviction thing maybe that's going to change anyway 
but most people have a fixed term and they're kind of they're going to be scrapping that and it's just going to go into effectively rolling or a period periodic tenancy so it's open-ended the tenants correct me if i'm wrong from your research the tenants have to give two months notice to give to serve notice on the landlords to say so to so say after i don't know three years they go right i'm ready to move on they have to give two months notice and then for the landlord i think it's going to depend on how long the the term is i think the details are going to come out um like in due course but basically it's open-ended the only change for the, the the tenant is i guess a lack of security in a way but then that security is replaced by not having a no-fault eviction so there isn't a case where a tenant will serve 12 months and then just leave because they think they have to it just is ongoing the only thing they need to do now is just give a bit more notice to leave so if they're finding somewhere else if they're moving um either finding a bigger place or moving area something like that they need to give two months notice instead of the current one from a landlord's point of view i don't mind this i mean ideally i'll be having them locked in for many many years um the the way i find tenants for my rentals or our rentals we find we find our tenants to with a view for them to stay long term um we still have ones in there that we've had for since we've acquired properties years ago and we generally look for people who are looking to settle somewhere not move so i mean a bit more instability in that they can just move in on month one and then month three they can decide that it's not for them we don't know the details though there might be some yeah. I, I guess i can see from a renter's point of view why why it's helpful for them because circumstances change and again this doesn't affect us personally because if if we take on a tenant and after three or four months they lose their job and their circumstances drastically change and they need to get out of the contract, then we just allow that. We, we, we're we not going to hold them to a year's contract if they're not going to be there for eight or nine months of it just because we've got the contract in place. We know that we'll find a tenant to replace them within that month and they don't need to fill that gap. But I can see from the renter's side of it, if circumstances change, particularly when it's in volatile times, we hit a recession and unemployment grows again. I can see that this gives them an out uh, while some people though like the security we've got tenant who who wants three four year contracts and what she says i want to stay as long as possible i want a contract that's going to last this long so i know i don't have to move that security's gone however the the flexibility on the I mean, this is what it's all built for it's for renters to have more flexibility in there and security uh, and security as well in their in their tenancies so i can see why it's done i think the vast majority of our tenants aren't going to like that i think they want to stay long term they like the security of knowing they're locked in for a year but i need to see the detail i think i think talking about it i realize you know i want to look more into it to understand it because it might be that we're yeah that there might be terms and caveats in it that we need to check out but i think as as it becomes more you know as it becomes more debated and you know and it goes through the process, we'll have clearer guidelines on it for sure. The next one's kind of tied to it, the rent caps. Oh, the rent caps, yeah. And it's funny because I had a friend asking me about this the other day. Basically, the new legislation come, is coming in, is saying that rent increases are now going to be capped to one a year. I didn't even know that there were landlords that were considering upping the rent more than once a year. If you're on a contract, you can't up the it's not like a phone contract where they seem to up it all the time <laughs> yeah it's a sore point <laughs> that's a conversation for a different podcast i suspect um it's not like that you're in a tenancy for because we do year tenancies if you're in a year tenancy then that rent is that for a year which is the idea of that that's the security on that side but this is the whole shoddy landlord thing like but for my friends it's actually it was her neighbor it wasn't her it was her neighbor her because the landlord owned both properties and she said her neighbour had moved out because the landlord had increased the month at uh, the month, increased the rents. Three months later, increased the rent again because she was in a rolling tenancy. And he was like, well, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. But he didn't say that. But basically, that was the the impression. Yeah. So she was asking me about it. And I was like, what's going on? What, like, what, what's he thinking? And I was like, no, of course you can't. Because I was like, if you increase the rent, you'd have to go into another tenancy. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you'd have to have another contract to reflect that increase because he's increased her rent as well. But I was like, do you have any paperwork to show this? And she's like, no. I was like, I'm fairly sure you can't do that. So they are, yeah, they're capping the rent increase. Again, when I saw that, I was like, who's doing it? And then it turns out there are landlords doing it. But then when you realise this, you re kind of realise why they're doing the rent reform bill. 
definitely 100 percent that because just reading all through this not being worried about it at all and not even considering that it might be an issue makes me realize how we are doing things right and possibly that there are people out there not doing it the way we do it yeah. and we do it the way we were trained and we know there's lots of people who do it this way do it the right way do it professionally not everyone's doing that yeah. There's a lot of things that don't make sense to me about yeah. how people act in property. But anyway, um, but I will actually just add, there's, you also have to give too much notice for rent increases as well, which again, yeah. I was like, why wouldn't why wouldn't landlords do that? But I do think people are like, right, next month it's going up. So that's annoying. And then there is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like basically, tri yeah, tribunal, that's yeah. it, for excess rent increases. Because at the moment, it's quite subjective. It's just like it has to be reasonable or something. I don't know if that's the exact word, but it has to be reasonable rent increase. And it's very subjective. So now it's like there's actually tribunal. So it will there, there will be some comeback and somewhere that tenants can go to check that they're not being ripped off by the landlord. And honestly, some of the rent increases like on the back of the mortgage rate increases are insane. Again, that same friend and this terrible landlord, like the, the increases are I mean, bearing in mind, we typically do 3%, yeah. if that, you yeah. know. What irritates me, and I'm conscious I don't want to go into too much detail, what irritates me is the landlords are going, well, my mortgage has gone up, I need to whack your rent up. And I'm like, well, when interest rates drops, mm. yeah. did you pass that on to the tenant? <laughs> exactly, yeah. What yeah. are your thoughts? With what you say, tribunals are a useful tool for the renters to have. But it shouldn't be necessary if the rent is in line with either inflation or what the market is. You shouldn't be charging more than once a year on an increase, I don't think, anyway. But I guess they have to put that in if suddenly there's a periodic contract rather than a year. And that period is two months. <laughs> and every two months they now can say, OK, so the next two months, two months time, it's going up to this. And then the day after they sign that, so oh, in the next two months it's going to be this one, you know. And it can just, that they can play it. So that's why they're closing loops, I yeah. think. Hopefully they won't let, you know, when we get the detail, but hopefully it won't be that. It won't be possible to be like that. No. But we'll see. No, we'll see. H having these discussions, though, you kind of understand why people don't like landlords. Yeah. Like we're talking to, because we're like, I can't understand why people don't like landlords. But then when we talk to other, normally other rent, like tenants, um, and it's when, I'm, when we're showing properties to new potential new tenants, that's when we hear these horror stories of what tenants are going through. Oh, the, the next one's simple. Yeah. Cannot hold, withhold consent for having pets. Well, cannot unreasonably. So you can withhold. Do you remember we had, because I think about this, we let our tenants have pets. Like we don't, we're not funny about that. We know that we're going to have long-term dream tenants. When they move out, we'll renovate the properties. We don't mind if they've got, you know, a pet, what have you. We're going to renovate anyway. We did, however, on one occasion turn down a tenant a potential tenant yeah the great days <laughs> two great two days great because the house just was not big enough and the, yeah. the the tenants were fab the dogs were brilliant weren't they we went around and met them but that's why we went around there yeah. because they said look we've got these you need to come and see yeah. um to decide if it's suitable it was a bigger house we would have let them but it was quite a small well not a, not a tiny bit it was not big enough the two dogs yeah. but do you remember the what the, <laughs> what the final nail in the coffin was when the, the daughter was there and she re referenced something that had happened do you know what i'm talking about didn't they knock the tv off the wall no it's the lampshade right there was damage to the lampshades oh, yes. and the see. daughter had made a comment about how that it was one of the dogs had done it and we yeah. were just like literally looking at the ceiling yeah. going the dog had got to the ceiling like it's yeah. that big yeah, they're over two metres tall when they start, as taller than I am. Weren't they Dalmatian type Great Danes, or am I imagining that? Yeah, no, I do remember that, yeah. yeah. They were low. I would yeah. have been so nice if rent to them, but it just wasn't possible. Awesome. But I think that's the kind of, un uh, the you can't un unreasonably, like we would have without a doubt rented to her. And we, you know, we have, well, I think most of our tenants have pets. There's actually studies done to show that tenants are more likely to stay and look after properties and pay their rent. Again, it's like DSS tenants, you know, credit issues this is why we rent to all these kinds of people because they notoriously struggle to get properties because landlords don't like that like don't like for whatever reason they're the kind of category they fall under whereas for us we're like well we know they're going to struggle to find anywhere else so they're going to look after the properties so yeah so we're very happy to rent to people yeah. with pets and they're more likely to stay longer they're on the pet thing as well i mean just as a landlord restricting pets the stat what do you know the stat on the households no. Oh, the oh yeah. The number of households in the UK that have pets. 
I weirdly looked this up with one of the kids of the homeschooling, but yeah. go on, you say. So it's 52% of the households in the UK have a pet of some sort. Now, you know, that, that there's homeowners in that as well, but th- that that's nearly half of the UK. And if you're taking a portion of renters from that, that there's this huge chunk of the market that you are out to, that you are restricting yourself from just by saying you can't have pets. And honestly, why would you not, want them to make themselves at home and have a pet i know the 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 issue is usually the damage it might cause to the house but it's deep cleaned at the start and the guest the tenants deep clean it on on exit and um and if they're there for five years you're redecorating anyway but you know so a pets most people have well I say most people over half of the population of the households in the uk have pets so i think it's just an unnecessary restriction really totally agree Oh, yes. Oh, I, like, I quite like the next one. Yeah. I do. I think this is helpful. A property ombudsman for landlords. I think that'd be really useful if they're trying to clamp down on amateur landlords and their dodgy practices, then this is the perfect medium to have someone to oversee it, someone to report to if the landlord, the, the tenants are truly distressed with, uh, with the landlords and the way they're managing the property and how they're being treated i think it's right to have someone in between to just overlook this you have it in all the financial sectors and you have it in a lot of other professional areas it is long overdue really i think to have it in, as a landlord totally agree i'm amazed we haven't had this sooner yeah. Yeah, i think it's gonna be great yeah. mainly because we're such su- oh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're just like because we're so comfortable that we are good landlords and it's like bring it on but that's the thing if you're wor- if you're worried then why are you worried yeah. you know they're there to help you as well really i think it's how yeah. it feels because if you're not doing your job properly then they will tell you well they've got the the other one is the portal as well there's going to be a landlord and tenant portal to help people help educate people and have all resources as well yeah because there's a lot of landlords that don't know even the simple paperwork that you need to produce is just starting a tenancy because it isn't just filling in a contract now is it there's a lot of you have to have proof of a, a previous addresses um, there's a prescribed information which is kind of like a a checklist of who's living there um what where they lived before what their contact details are then there's um obviously the deposit scheme which is all government regulated as well and then you have the right to rent you have to pr- produce that as a landlord um on the beginning of tenancies so tenants understand what they're doing when they're renting um and it's just you mean how, how to, to rent. rent sorry how to rent yeah i love that yeah. see some of these things i absolutely love i like the fact there's going to be normal because i think at the moment is i mean we rent we choose to rent and one of the things that drives me nuts is that so many letting agents are like are just wrong they literally just are wrong about things they're unprofessional they're not all of them obviously not all letting agents but in our experience we there's been such terrible practices by letting agents again not all of them and landlords as well lovely 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 people don't know how to be a landlord don't know how to be a letting agent so but the thing is there's no one that you can rely on there's like not an impartial person so i actually think it's i think it's great i think there's a few of these i really like i mean the only the only flip side on that is if tenants don't understand their rights to rent is there a potential abuse of that system i mean like maybe they have had the how to rent book um everything's been filled in professionally say we rented to somebody we did everything right and then something they weren't happy with something after they moved into the property uh, and then asked us to do it but it maybe fell outside of our jurisdiction to do um would they then get this ombudsman involved and would that then be a black mark against us because we'd been reported i think if it's not something that is our responsibility i think if a tenant and again, this might help because if tech, cause there's a lot of people who are like, oh, horrible landlord scum, parasite, all that malarkey leech. They're always the, the, the catchphrases I get. If they go to an ombudsman and go, my landlord's done this, and the ombudsman goes, well, actually, that's exactly, for your example, was out of their jurisdiction, then they will know because it's not us yeah. saying it will be an impartial yeah. person. So hopefully it will, you know, it will, because I think it should be heavily wasted in the tenant's favour, but I think it should be fair. Like, obviously, they're saying something, 
you know, that is not our responsibility. I have no doubt it would be fair because it's an ombudsman who, who sit as an impartial party, third party, basically, don't they? So it will be fair. But I do think actually at the start, this is there's going to be a lot of people messaging the ombudsman about certain things which perhaps are, are nothing to do with how the landlord does it. That occurred to me as well. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there are people who hate landlords and yet need them in the same what like, was that a Facebook post? I was exactly what I was oh, just thinking of. Tell that story. That was funny because we found that yesterday um, on a Facebook group. Uh, oh, it was a property group. It was, it was a property group, but it was no. So it was actually in a particular area. It was it was a group for people to post properties for rent. But it was like a, a local property group. It wasn't like a property investor group. It was an area. It's some you know somewhere that landlords could post their their properties. And someone had put, and I thought it was a bit odd because someone had posted, I'm a new, I'm a new property investor wanting yeah. to get up and running. I've got some money. I just want a bit of help if anyone can help me. And of course it ended up on my algorithm because that's exactly what yeah. I do. So I went and I just replied and just said, you know, I do look like, I'm happy to have a chat with you. Do loads, of, I do podcasts and the, the, like do loads of free content. Like drop me a message if you're interested. But I noticed there was another comment and I read it and it was, um, he was like, he just put a link to an article, abolish landlordism or something, or landlords. And then I clicked into the article, had a quick read, and it was just someone who was very angry had written an article about how landlords are horrible, basically. And it was all completely wrong. So much of the stuff they said, I was like, completely wrong. And anyway, but I clicked onto this person's profile just because I was curious. <laughs> and of course, because it was in a group, the profile was their profile from the group. And literally, they've only posted one other time. And <laughs> there was like... You know, single man looking for somewhere to rent, clean, tidy, not. It says like he was like kind and courteous yeah. or something, and um, yeah, basically just did it, trying to sell himself, like looking for a landlord. But he was like, he was also like, oh, I think he was like, um, his he could only afford afford a certain amount. Like he didn't have very much to put towards it on benefits. Like a lot of the boxes that you know a lot of landlords won't rent to. Yeah. And I was like, it's so interesting. You're like, bought landlords, but yeah. then in the only other post, he's like, please, can I have a property from a landlord? Yeah, but his defense, he maybe did the, please, can I have a, land, a property from a landlord first? And then didn't get a positive oh, response. So he's yeah, gone yeah. on the offensive. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's um, blacklisting himself for the yeah. future. But. but it just made me laugh because he was like, nice, he's like kind and courteous and all this stuff. And I was like, if someone's, po it's one of my pet peeves. If someone's like posting saying, I need some help getting started. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not that person, if you're not the person they're asking for, just leave it. Yeah. You're, he's not asking what's your opinion on landlord landlords he's saying I'm, i want yeah. some help so, anyway there's a couple of other points yeah. coming up next year that the well maybe not next year but they're in review as well so they're not on this pass on this reform reform bill at the moment but what are they oh so there's two there's one applying the decent home <laughs> reading my notes the decent home standards basically there's going to be like a minimum standards like a minimum criteria for a rental property which apparently is currently in place for social housing but they're talking about bringing it across across all the private rental sector and then the other one again how is this that this is even a thing Bans on rent, uh, bans on not renting, because I wrote this down wrong earlier, but I, I wrote bans on renting to families with children and, or on benefits. And Drew was like, what? You're banning people from renting to, and I was like, oh no, it's yeah. a ban on not renting yeah. to them. So yeah, you can't say no DSS. You can't say no families with kids. Pretty sensible. Yeah. And it's a well. thing. It's a thing. This is what some landlords do and some letting agents do. But again, they just won't put it in the thing. Like, uh, uh, anyway. So that is the rentist reform. Yeah. In a nutshell. Very impressed with your research, Mr. Pierce. You can tell he's researched. I did read on it. Good. God, I sound mainly so patronising, don't I? Mainly because this might be cut out, but mainly because the reform bill came and passed me by without me even noticing. <laughs> and then you said last week, let's do that. I'm like, all right, I'm going to read that then because that'll be important. Do you know, I'm not too far wrong. I'm not. But again, having read it, it's not, it doesn't really, I mean, it does affect us, but it doesn't really affect us. But it's good to know. But also it's like all property stuff it just doesn't move quickly now they yeah. they're looking to implement this in october 24 and i think that's still ambitious i think it'll be a year after that yeah. i mean I it's probably not going to be before 2025 but it might it might be at the end of that year so you, i mean from now 
yeah, maybe 18 to 20 months from now, I reckon it might come into play. But that's it's good to get these things in, you know, because they do take time to go through. But they take time to implement as well, particularly if I've got contracts at the moment. You need to start thinking about what you're going to do for the new new um, new contracts, the new shape it's going to be, um, and make sure that your, your tenants who are here at the moment are on board with it and they understand it and that they're all ready for when it finally goes through. And the ombudsman as well, like... That is gonna. That's gonna take so long. Oh, really? Setting up an ombudsman. I don't think. I think that'll be a long time. Yeah. I think the idea of it is great, but they'll they'll probably do a soft release of it. It'll get inundated, and they'll have to they'll have to double the manpower on it. <laughs> I wonder if we're gonna have to pay a, a membership fee to be part of the ombudsman. Yeah, I, I think like licensing for, um, say, you're a sourcing agent or, or a letting agent, you, you have to have licenses for that. I think you'll probably have one for being a landlord now as well. And you normally get charged if you get a complaint in about you. Right. Like if you, yeah, I don't I, I don't know if it, yeah. I, I think with a lot of ombudsmen, you get, you have to pay a fine if you get a complaint against you. Yeah, presumably if it's a, a legitimate one. Well, that's what I just that's what I just paused about. I was like, I don't know if because I know because when I when I um um got compliant as a sourcing agent, I went through all of this. I can't I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry, it's not that's helpful, isn't it? Uh, go back and read your notes. You've got a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Renters reforms done. Fascinating yeah. stuff. If you got any questions about that, where do they get in touch? You can message me through my website, Anna Pierce. No, oh my God, I'm off my game tonight. Through propertyempress.com. You can message me there. Uh, you can also message, message me through my platform. So I'm mainly on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. So you can message me there. Um, or you can just write to me at Anna at AnnaPierce.com as well. But yeah, any questions, comments, if there's anything you want us to cover? Yeah, new subjects because we're four in now. We've got a few to talk about this season but should i um, say what we're gonna what i want to talk about next week okay yeah what's what's next week's subject next week because we've done quite a lot of big stuff we've done the property market strategies rent renters reforms it's quite big picture stuff but one of the things that i seem to talk about a lot about at the moment on my socials particularly when i'm doing my lives is the how you structure a property deal so that you can put money into the deal and then you can refinance and pull all that money back out of it and then obviously the property is yours it produces this beautiful in income but there's a very specific way of doing it um, and I seem to say that so much at the moment so I'd like to do a whole episode because then I can say to people like go and check out this episode on the podcast so it's called BRRR -R 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 -R, depending on who you speak yeah. to but it's basically buy refurb no buy renovates refinance rents rinse repeat or whatever it is it depends you talked about all the different r's but thanks for you recycling your money how do i buy a property get the value up enough to be able to um refinance pull your money back out again particularly as we work with angel investors if we're borrowing money to buy a house we sure as heck need to be able to pay it back yeah. with interest so we'll talk about that and also to me maybe touch on all the backup plans in case things don't go exactly as you want but i just thought it'd be quite a nice nuts and bolts yeah. give the juicy detail that people like yeah that's great no I, I like that stuff that's the stuff we started with yeah um, i really like that it really uh it's really interesting stuff in the meantime go on propertyempress.com and you can see any upcoming courses that anna's running there's a chance to book for any calls so if you've got a strategy call you want to have with her or just a 20 minute consultation to find out how to get started um she'll give you a little help on that so you can book a 30 minute free call about anything whether it's working with me if you need some help getting started so that's always a really nice place to start yeah thank you yeah get on there and uh if you've got any questions even if it's about today's subject i'm not sure we're going to be but if people have got help if people have got questions on the renters reform, <laughs> i'm not sure how helpful we could be but those guys that kept reading their notes <laughs> don't, don't ask them <laughs> but you could say I mean, you could ask we could research it <laughs> but i think for now we just want to give an overall view i think because i'm hearing a lot of people saying that they're they're worried about it one one of my followers in particular talk talks about it quite a lot and i'm just like i just don't think we need to worry about it personally no no i think we've covered that today and hopefully anyone who's got any questions about that before listening to this will feel a little bit more at ease next week 
Brrrr stuff. Excited about doing that. Thank you everybody for listening this week. We really appreciate your ears to hear yeah. us. And uh, we hope <laughs> always ends. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll we'll um you join you join us next week and uh, we'll go through more stuff on the Property Empress podcast. Thank you. Have a lovely week. See you next time. Bye.